Well, for this week's Paleo News here, we're going to go over um, three papers all on the same theme, and that is the um, re 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 relatively recently discovered um, uh, techniques to find dinosaur coloration. Now, the first one we're going to go over with is probably one that's got the big news out in media, and for the wrong reasons, I'll get to that. Uh, this was published in uh, Current Biology. Um, authors Fian Mc um, Smithwick, Robert Nich Nichols, um, Inez C. Um, Cuthill, and Jacob Binther. This is the counter shading and stripes in the theropod dinosaur Cynoceropteryx Sin um, reveals heterogeneous habitats in the early Cretaceous G. hole biota. Okay. Now, <coughs> let's see. In brief, uh, Smithwick et al. reconstructs the coloration of small carnivorous dinosaur Cynoceropteryx. It had a bandit mask and striped tail, and was um, also countershaded, you know, dark on top, light on bottom, using 3D models under different light. The author showed that this it, that it, its camouflage would have worked best in open habitat. You know, paleo color can be help predict paleo habitat. You know, okay. So um, basically, they you know went over and analyzed the. Um, you know, they measured as before in other papers the, um, you know, um, the um, fuzzy effects and feathers and all that in, uh, in two specimens in Cynoceropteryx. And through that, they were able to make a model, um, you know, they were able to show an illustration to show the exact color pattern. And <clears throat> their argument is, based on this color pattern and their supposed experiments on how light would interact with it, this would make great camouflage and it works best in open environments. Now, the most interesting thing about this is that it has a bandit mask. In other words, these dark coloration you know, have, will go over its eye and look like a bandit mask. Um, at, you know, and I think that's a real scientific name for that. And it has a striped tail, you know, but it has a... Um, counter shading dark on top light on bottom deal sounds pretty impressive well in discussion with the, you know in the paleo journal club where you know we talk about these the coloration besides for the bandit mask has already been discussed in other papers according to some of the people who've looked into this further and i think their counter shading argument is kind of weak you know as well you know based on the discussions that we had it there's it seems as though it's wanting to take this animal's coloration and it says, well, it works best in an open environment, therefore live in an open environment, despite the fact that a lot of the fossil evidence shows otherwise. You know, this is kind of a forest environment and so forth. There may be open environments here and there, you know, nothing's ever truly consistent. But the fact that because of this coloration, it lived in an open environment, that, you know, it's forming the habitat to the animal and not necessarily the, you know, uh, not not taking any other factors involved, you know. So and the, the illustrations they have, um, I don't think are very good. Where they have supposed models of the counter shading, the differing patterns of uh, predicted um, self shattering in Cynoceropteryx. They don't really show that much, and you know, it doesn't really give a good explanation on that. But this is one to make big deals on the news. Like this is the this is the paper that, you know, hey, we finally got the coloration around this one dinosaur. Well, it was already kind of um, covered in other papers besides for the bandit mask. Not to mention that the illustrations on this seems to say, oh, it had reddish, you know, reddish brown hair with a white underside. Where in other papers, and again, I haven't looked into this, but according to the Journal Club, who uh, those who have looked into this. You know, these are other paleontologists and those um, graduate students in this. The we don't know much about melanosomes in specific yet. You know, in detail, there's still work needing to be done here. And the melanosomes in this that has that dark coloring could range from either yellow to brown. So we're not we haven't pinpointed yet. So, but it's getting a lot of things in the press for all the wrong reasons. Um, and I'll probably get to it why. Um, fossil and next, let's talk about the next one. Fossilized melanosomes and the color of Cretaceous dinosaurs uh, and birds. By um, this is um, from Letters, I believe. Yeah. All right. So um, by Fuxing Zhang et al. There's a lot of authors here. I'll go over the um, um, let's see abstract here. 
Spectacular fossils from the early Cretaceous Jihol group of northeastern China have greatly expanded our knowledge of the diversity of paleobiology of dinosaurs and early birds, and contributed to our understanding of the origin of birds of flight and, uh, and of feathers. Uh, Pinaceous vein feathers and integumentary filaments are preserved in birds and non avian therapod dinosaurs, but little is known of their microstructure. Here we report that melanosomes, um, color bearing organelles, are not only preserved in the Pinaceous fe um, feathers of early birds, and also in an identical manner of integumentary filaments in non avian dinosaurs, thus refuting recent claims. That the filaments are partially decayed dermal collagen fibers. Hmm. Examples of both um, eumelanosomes and field melanosomes have been identified and they are often preserved in life position uh, within the structure of a partially degraded feathers and filaments. Furthermore, the data here provided empirical evidence of reconstruction of co um, the colors and color patterns of the extinct birds and theropod dinosaurs. For example, the dark color stripes and tails of the theropod dinosaurs and osteropteryx can reasonably be inferred to have exhibited chestnut to reddish brown tones. Okay, reasonably. There's a, there's a key word there. Okay, so let's see if let me I just want to get a close look of some of the melanosomes of some of the, um, um, many of the species. It's a very short paper here. And, um, this counter, well, and one of the things about this is that when they found these, some of these feathered dinosaurs, like Cenosauropteryx, you see the little fibers around their necks and, you know, <clears throat> along the back, depending on the species. Some scientists have argued that the, they may not be feathers, but the collagen fibers in the skin. This argument, or this paper argues against that and it explains why. They seem to fit the pattern of melanosomes, you know, and also it's not bacteria as well. That's another argument. It's bacteria, you know, some people thought that this is just a uh, bacteria uh, film grown over it, and they show why it's not that. Very good, you know, so very a much more interesting paper to read. Now, this one, I will admit, when I read it, I, I didn't absorb too much, but I'll go over... Um, I'll go over what I can here. Melanosomes evolution indicates a key physiological shift within feathered dinosaurs by Quingao Li et al. Again, number of authors. Inference of color patterning in extinct dinosaurs has been based on a relationship between the morpho morphology of melanin containing organelles, melanosomes, and color and extent bird feathers. When this relationship evolved, um, relative to the origin of feathers and um, other novel integumentary structures, such as hair and filamentous um, body coverings of extinct dinosaurs, um, extinct archosaurs, um, has not been evaluated. Here we sample melanosomes from integuments of 181 extent amniotaxa and, thir and 13 lizard, turtle, dinosaurs, and pterosaur fossils from the Upper Jurassic and Lower Cretaceous China. We find that in the lineage leading up to birds, the observed increase in diversity of melanosome morphologies appear abruptly near the origin of pinnate feathers in Manoraptor and dinosaurs. Similarly, mammals show an increased diversity of melanosome forms compared to all ectothermic amniotes. In these two clades, mammals and Manoraptor dinosaurs include birds, um, including birds, melanosomes form, to, and form and color are linked and color reconstruction may be possible. By contrast, melanosomes in lizards um, lizard, turtle, and crocodilian skin, as well as the archosaurian filamentous body coverings, dinosaur protofeathers, and pterosaur pycnofibers, show a limited diversity of form that is uncorrelated to color in extant taxa. These patterns may be explained by convergent key uh, changes in the key um, melanocortin system of mammals and birds, which are known to affect pleiotrophically both melanin based colorations and energetic processes such as metabolic rate in vertebrates. It may therefore support significant physiological shifts in Manoraptor dinosaurs. I won't get too much into this, but I do suggest probably reading it. As I said, it was hard for me to follow. Um, now, despite the length of this, the 16 pages, it's only about uh, four pages of actual text, and the rest is just illustrations, the photographs, and the, and the spots where they um, took their samples and measurements, so to speak, of what they brought in. All right, so all these papers have to do with the melanosome thing. But the first one I talked about, about the Cenosauropteryx and the bandit mask, besides the bandit mask, most of this stuff has been overhyped. You know, uh, I don't know exactly the details of where uh, we're in the press. I just noticed that the um, other people are mentioning it. It's not surprising. But here's the thing you got to bear in mind. Well, as awesome as it is, we're finally finding out well, a little bit, the coloration of these animals, which has all been speculated up until recently, the last few years. We can't 
you can't you know whenever we find something new he is good to slow down and you know ask questions even if it's something you don't want to ask let me give you an example of this um when we discovered the cretaceous tertiary meteor that hit in um the yucatan peninsula in mexico and we've suddenly came and the whole world was like wow the meteor killed dinosaurs even in the science even in the science Scientific academic academics, whenever there is um, showing signs in the fossil record that there was a mass extinction, many people jump on the bandwagon. And, Let's find a meteorite that did it, even though it may not be necessarily a meteorite that killed them all. And then you know, so we tend to get excited about this, and this, I think it's starting to happen again. Now we're going to have more studies on this. You know, there needs to be more detailed studies of melano mel melanosome shapes and what range of colors they have and bear in mind that just you know melanosomes are not necessarily the only factor that brings in color you know maybe melanosomes and other things that bring up different shades of color in combination more research needs to be done on this so it's great to read up on this but don't just jump and make it absolute fact that he discovered this is like mm, okay this is what they've published and here's a couple of things that um shows that the first paper here the counter shading may not be maybe jumping the gun a bit so, I guess that's sort of moral story I you know, bring about with all these papers here. So again, I'll link them down below. Sorry if I didn't get too much detail on this is normal. As I said, one of the papers was a bit hard for me to follow, but maybe you have a better time with it. But it's always good to read up on all the papers that you can, you know, and absorb what you can. And, uh, alright, so colorations of, you know, dinosaurs and what research we have currently. Thank you all for watching, and you have a nice day.